thus far, Father. And right now we get, Lord, the opportunity to hear your word, and I get the privilege to preach this word, Father. Lord, I thank you that, Lord, you will fill my mouth with everything that you have for me to say. Anoint me to minister and preach and deliver this word. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you so much. We're going right in, y'all. Amen. Amen. We're going to move this a little bit over. For those that are online, I pray that you're just excited about all that is taking place. If you are, say yes. yes. Pastor Shay. Yes. Give up the hands. Give up the hearts. For those that are online watching, you are part of our family. You have seen this young lady grow into a woman and over these last couple of years, even for those that when we began in COVID in 2020 online, for those that you know came from that are from Jamaica, yes, from the Ronald McDonald House, you have seen just the the just the Pastor Shea evolving. And so it's such a privilege. Thank you for watching online today. We're about to go into the word. So we thank you. Today the title of this message is called Advancing the Kingdom. Say advancing the kingdom. Advancing the kingdom. We've been on this message. This is part five. If you have not caught the others, you can on YouTube or Facebook. It is worth it, not because it's me, but because the word of God is being ministered. And anytime the word of God is being preached, it is good. If it is rightly divided, amen, let's, let's make sure we add that in. But I'm so excited for today as we're closing out this series. For those that are not aware, every year, House of Prayer prays. We think Pastor John and I come before the Lord and he gives us a theme. And this year, the theme is advance the kingdom. Amen. Advance the kingdom. Teach the people how to advance the kingdom of God. Yeah. We may have heard that term many times. The kingdom is within you. Go advance the kingdom. Jesus was advancing the kingdom. What does that all mean? So I took this journey with House of Prayer Church these last four weeks. And now it is the culmination of these four weeks. We're going to answer the question, how did Jesus advance the kingdom? Amen. Because we want to do it not on our way, right. but Jesus' yeah. ways. There's a way to advance the kingdom yeah. of God, and we need to make very clear that we're not trying to do it our way. We're yeah. not advancing our churches, our gospel. No, no, no. Ah. It's his gospel. Yeah. It's his yeah. church. Yeah. It's no one else. It belongs to him, and we yeah. must do it. Right. Guess what? His way. Right. Right. His right. way, not our way. Right. Not what we think. Amen? Right. So we're going fast, and we're going in. Amen. 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 There are two kingdoms. The kingdom of God, which also spoke about the kingdom of heaven, which is the same, or the kingdom of this world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two kingdoms. Humanity has a choice to choose which kingdom they are going to follow. Yeah. Yeah. And guess what? As a believer, I pray that we have chosen the kingdom of God yeah. and not of this world. Amen. But there's a caveat here. I need to make mention of this. Because if you choose or declare or state that you're part of the kingdom of God, but you're living like the kingdom of this world, there's a dilemma. Ooh. There's an issue here. Because your actions, therefore, have spoken for you. Did everybody get that? Yeah. Yeah. If you say or declare that you're part of the kingdom of God, but your actions are different from what you are speaking, there is a dilemma. And your actions, not what you have said, your actions have spoken for you. It's a dilemma because we are the light. We're the sunshines, come on. We're the ones that walk on this earth and we are the ones that are representing the king. And we must represent him properly. We must represent him not according to us, but according to the word of God. Amen. And so it becomes a dilemma to make, you know, there becomes a dilemma because I think that maybe we have all experienced someone that says something but does the other. Yeah. And we cannot be found as believers and follows Christ as those that do that because it becomes an issue. The standard in which we walk out our Christianity is not ours. Guess what? It's not your neighbors. It's not keeping up with the Joneses. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not even the neighbor sitting next to you. The standard in which you live by and I live by is the word of the Lord. Come on. It's the Bible. It's the word. It's God's word. There is no in-between. Tell your neighbor, there is no in-between. You must be all in. Come on, tell them that too. You must be all in. God is calling his house to be all in. God is calling the believer, the follower of Christ, the one that professes, professes and states, but now walks out in action to be all in. We are, will not be double-minded. Come on. We will not be straddling the fence. I understand.
understand the struggle of walking through a process. That's not what I'm talking about here today. When you come into the house of God and God is processing you, what does that mean? God is walking with you. He's journeying with you. He's delivering you. He's setting you free of some things. He's walking you out. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a believer who's been walking with God for years and still is straddling the fence. How can we advance the kingdom of God straddling the fence? How can we advance the kingdom of God by saying one thing and doing another? That's not how we want to raise our children. That's not how we want to be representing God. So we have to dig deep. That's what Be Made Whole is about. Awareness of where you are with God. In all those areas, spiritual, relationally, physically, mentally, emotionally, and saying, God, help me. And then coming alongside so we can help, come on, build the church. Yeah. Ephesians 4.11 talks about the gifts to the church. Pastor Shay, myself, we are gifts to you, the bride of Christ. We are gifts. We build, we share, we teach, we train, we raise up. That is our responsibility so that you can do the work of the ministry, so you can advance the kingdom of God. And we're advancing the kingdom of God right alongside with you. Amen? So how did Jesus advance the kingdom? If you're taking notes, you want to write that down. How did Jesus advance the kingdom? Number one, he showed up. He showed up. He showed up. Jesus was there. He was, he was where he was supposed to be. He was exactly where he was supposed to be. He was in alignment where he needed to be going. He wasn't there, there, and everywhere confused. He was where he was supposed to be. He showed up. He showed up. Jesus was in the temple. The story about they go every year, Mary and Joseph and Jesus and a whole caravan went to the temple, to Jerusalem, to give the offerings. And all of a sudden, they're leaving, and it's three days later. And I want to pick up the story there. They went to offer up offerings, but this is what happens in Luke Chapter 2, verse 45. When they couldn't find him, he's lost. Mary's telling Joseph, where's Jesus? I don't know. Where, I thought he was with you. When I was reading the commentaries, they said that it was such a large caravan that the men and the, the women and the children were in the front and the men were in the back. So Joseph might have said, that, oh, he's with Mary. And then Mary might have said, oh, Jesus is with his dad. He's with Joseph. And so they couldn't, they, no, no one knew that he was even missing for three days. Could you imagine that, parent? Wow. Hallelujah. <laughs> so when they couldn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem to search for him there. Verse 46 says this. Three days later, they finally discovered him in the temple, sitting among the religious teachers, listening to them and asking questions. All who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. The, his parents didn't know what to think. So they're watching the scene go down. I'm like, what is going on here? They didn't know what to think. Son, his mother said, why have you done this to us? <laughs> Your father and I have been frantic, searching for you everywhere. But why did you search, he says. Why were you searching? Jesus is like, but why did you need to search? Literally, the Bible says that. He asked, didn't you know that I was in my father's house? Some translation says, didn't you know that I was about my father's business? But they didn't understand what he meant. Then he returned to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. And his mother stored those things in her heart. Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and all the people. Jesus showed up. We need to show up. Yeah. If we are going to advance the kingdom of God as well, we must be about the Father's business. Yeah. Yeah. We can't be on our agenda. Mm. Come on. Oh, those days are gone if you are a believer. We've been bought with a price. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Our, our Western mind culture does not aid us in being part of the kingdom of God. Yeah. Why are you saying that? Because the United States of America is a democracy. <laughs> we get to choose. We get to vote in people. We have this privilege, right? It is a form. This is what democracy, uh, the definition is. It's a form of government in which the people have the authority to deliberate and to decide legislation or to choose governing officials to do so. So we get a lot of choices. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's not the kingdom of God. It's right, a theocracy. Right, There's one right. king and he's in charge. Yeah, yeah. Did everybody hear that? Yeah. The kingdom of God yeah. is a form of theocracy, not a democracy. He's the king. He's the one that says how it goes and not us. But what happens is there's a conflict here because we're born and raised in a democracy. We get so many choices. We get to get rye bread, wheat bread, white bread, what kind of bread? Sour bread. We get some 
choices. Come on. We we don't like you. We voting you out. That's not what Jesus was never voted in. Miles Monroe, Jesus was never voted in. Jesus was before it's and it's to come. He was there before anything existed. He was God. Come on. He was existed before anything existed. Miles Monroe said, Jesus didn't get voted in. I was like, yes and amen. I like that. Yes, yes doctor. Yes, it is the truth. But how can we understand this? I don't like to be told what to do. You're going to tell me how I have to live my life? No. The word of God. Right. Right. If you said he's going to be the Lord, hello somebody, the Lord, L-O-R-D, the Lord of your life, that means you give up your rights. You've exchanged your rights from democracy to, come on, a theocracy with one king and his name is Jesus. It's not you. Oh, come on, church. We don't like that. We don't like it. We don't like to be told. What, don't tell me what to do. I'm grown. You're 18 and you grown. As my mother would say in Spanish, what did you say you don't want to know? I said it quick for a reason. Basically, you don't even know how to wipe your behind and you're ready in love. It's a saying like Latino folks say. Yeah, learn how to wipe your behind first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to be in charge, y'all. Yeah. Now, I'm going to give you some slack, and I'm going to give myself slack because I'm talking preaching myself, too. Yeah. We were raised in this thing. Yeah. It's not that we want to be like this, right? It was just raised in it. And I, I previously preached a couple of parts before that even if you were raised in a non-Christian home, then how did you even know how to live for God? So... God is so merciful and gracious, though. Yes, he's so yes. kind. Yes, he, he doesn't throw us away. Come on. He's patient, so he processes us, right? Yeah. Yeah. We talked about the process, so it's okay that you weren't raised in a Christian home. It, it's okay. But once you come into the kingdom, come on, somebody. Yeah. Once yeah. you make the choice, if you're going to make this choice, before you make the choice, think wisely. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's some things that are going to require of you, and some things are going to have to change. Yeah. And we must be willing to change and be transformed of the power of God. It's important. Our minds must be transformed by the word of God so we do not continue to act as if we are living in the kingdom of God. Mm. It's very important to read the word of God to allow it to change your thinking, our mindsets. Everything has to change. Yeah. I, when Before I lived for Jesus, I thought a whole complete way. Yeah. So what happens when you come to Jesus at 30 or 40 years old? How do you take 40 years or 30 years of going one way, living one way, thinking one way, acting one way, talking one way, dressing one way, and now all of a sudden, Jesus is so patient, he's so gracious, he's so merciful, he takes you on a journey, he doesn't say, now here, follow these rules, no, walking with Jesus is not, a, it's not religion, it's not rules, it's a relationship. He says, I want to make you new. I want to clean you up. I want to take out the pain. Even what we experienced this morning, I was just, I was crying Jesus. Because he says, I want to go deep, Elizabeth. I, want, I was hearing words that were said to me recently. And it, it penetrated my soul. And it just brought so much pain to me. And it's been in my ear and in my ear. And God says, I'm healing you of that. I'm healed. Come on, come Let, give me that. Give me that. Give me that. Yeah, He's so patient. But he is requiring us. That our language, come on, our culture, our come language, on. our dress, our attire, everything changes. Yeah. We're coming out of darkness into light. Yeah. How yeah. can we be the same? Yeah. How can we live the same? Wow. We're not about two kingdoms. Yeah. We're living for one kingdom. It's the kingdom of God. And we're called to advance the kingdom of God. And if we're going to do it, we must journey with God. Yeah. Yeah. To get to this place yeah. that we look different. Yeah. We smell different. Amen. We speak different different we dress different everything matters yeah yeah oh come on yeah everything yeah everything yeah everything matters to jesus yeah everything matters to jesus and i just want to say for free it's so much better on that side come on yeah it's so much better on that side it's so much better on that side it may be difficult through the process but it's so much better on that side because those are good things destiny promises Everything he has, everything your heart desires, even. But we must first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else will be added unto you. That's what the word says. Our flesh 
It cannot be the flesh's way. It must be the king's way, and that's it. We're going to advance the kingdom of God if we show up. Mm. We must show up. We must be where we're supposed to be and be about the Father's business. What is he asking to you to do, and where is he asking you to be? Where that is, show up. Yeah. Number two, he served. <coughs> Jesus served. How did Jesus advance the kingdom? He served. Jesus gave himself to people. You know, there was a story in the Bible in Matthew 20, 26 to 28. It's the mother of Zebedee's sons, and she's talking to Jesus, and she's saying, Jesus, I need a favor. Can you bring my sons? I got two sons. She's trying to get in with Jesus. You know, I want one to sit on your left and one to your right, and she says, woman, man, you don't even know what you're asking of right now. Can they drink this cup of suffering? Do you even know what you're asking? Be careful what you're asking. I'm going to pick up with uh, 26, verse 26. Not so with you, Jesus says. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be a servant. Jesus served. And whoever wants to be first must be a slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give a ransom for his life. Jesus did not come, serve me. Come on, wash my feet. No, 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 no. He came to serve. He came as a ransom to give his life. The kingdom, this is kingdom culture. The king of kings is serving and not being served. Amen. That is counterculture. That's like, okay. you know, in this world, it's like, serve me, give me, I deserve. We don't deserve anything. Come on. <laughs> we deserve death. <laughs> we are nasty. We're ugly. Our hearts are deceitfully wicked, the Bible says. Read the word of God. Our flesh wants everything, everything opposite of what God wants. Yeah. It's only the spirit of man inside of us that helps us to desire to walk another way. And when you feed that spirit, man, guess what? It grows and then you begin to really desire the things of God. Amen. And it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Jesus embodies servanthood and servant leadership. You know, and as I was at Royal, I put Pastor Shane. That's exactly, yeah. that's, that's, that's a huge part. Yeah. You embody servanthood and servant leadership. You serve and you're not asking to be served. <laughs> I always say, I need to be the first one here and I usually am. <laughs> when it comes to work days, I, I should be the first one here. And there comes a point where that shifts, right? right. Yeah. But I need to lead by example. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Not come do for me, come do for me. What am I doing? Mm -hmm. you know, we don't come to that. So make, let's make the application as believers. Our expected behavior should be as Christ. Regardless of a position or authority that is given to us, the believer should come to work, right? To come to the workplace, should come to your home. Yes, I did say home. Yes, I did say house. Yes, your home. Come on, and the house of God and come ready to serve. Mm -hmm. Who are you to sit back and demand anything? Why don't we serve? One thing I gave counseling when I did the, the premarital counseling, I said, try to outserve each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. Try to outserve one another. That's good. I remember that. I remember that clearly. It does not change because we have letters behind our name. Come on. It wow. doesn't change because we have obtained obtained a title. It does not change because we are in a leadership position. The higher the man, come on, the higher the man goes in position, the lower he should get to the floor. Gotta be so we say in this house. Face to the floor. On our knees. The higher a God even allows us to take positions of authority and places to speak into the people of God. How much more? Even in your workplace, we got principals in here, we got teachers. You're pouring into teachers, you're pouring into students. You're all over this place, there's people of authority and position. How much more should our face be to the floor? Seeking God for wisdom and how to treat people and how to love and how to be God's representation. Because guess what? When he, when he came to advance the kingdom, he came to serve. I love this. The first, the, this is the best example. It's the Last Supper. Mm -hmm. And everybody's walking in. And the custom is, right, the tradition was at that time is that someone, the servant, comes and washes the people's feet. Because they sit on the floor, they're reclining, feet are like in people's faces, kind of like thing. thing. If you ever went to Israel, we went and we ate, we kind of enjoyed that experience. But there was a servant at the door that comes and washes the feet of the people. Well, there was no servant there. So what does Jesus do? Oh, he takes the towel, he takes the water basin, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and he begins to wash yeah. and bend down and wash the feet of his disciples. The king yeah. of the kingdom is washing those of the servants of God. What the ultimate example of servanthood. The most lowliest position, but he was teaching them something. He was teaching his disciples something. 
and he's teaching us something. He's teaching us something. That we are called to serve, not to be served. Amen? Now, there are times when we are served. Praise God for that. But that is, should not be expected. Right. Yeah. Right. What a gift to be served. Yeah. Somebody brings you a plate of food. Don't let me get messy in the house. <laughs> just connect the dots. For the sake of time, connect the dots. I'll just stop right there. Number three. Y'all know me. I would have went all in, in that business. But for the sake of time, we're moving forward. How did Jesus advance the kingdom? Guess what? He saved. Amen. He saved. How? Jesus became incarnate so humanity can experience salvation. He became... Come on, right here. He came to this earth. 100% God, 100% man. Jesus brings salvation to the Zacchaeus' house. He saved. Luke 19.1 says this. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see Jesus. He wanted to see who Jesus was. But because he was so short. Oh, poor guy. For those short people, I'm sorry. But guess what? The blessing's coming. Tell your neighbor, the blessing's coming. Come on, come on. Don't hate. Don't hate on the short people. The blessing's coming. Because he was short, he could not he could not see over the crowd, the Bible says. Verse 4 says this. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree, <laughs> a fig tree, to see him. You talk about desperation? Mm. I'm right here. Just like last week, I was blind Bonomeus, the loudest one. I'm right here. I'm a climb a tree for Jesus if I need to. Whatever I got to do to see him, to get to him. Since Jesus was coming that way, five, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. Could you imagine Jesus looking up and saying, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay in your house today. I would have been like, yes. Jesus is coming to my house. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter. Of course, religious folks. Yeah, yeah. He said, gone to be uh, the great, he says, he has gone to be the, the guest of a sinner. They're muttering because Jesus decides to go into a sinner's house. God have mercy. That's a religious person. Why would Jesus? You know, Jesus said the sick, they're already healed. I need to go to the, to the sick. I need to go to the hurting. I need to go to the dying. Yeah. Verse 8 says this. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to your house because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. Jesus came to save. Verse 8 drops the mic. He says he is going to pay four times. He's going to give back the possessions and four times the amount of anybody that he cheated. Right here, that's a demonstration of Zacchaeus coming into alignment with the kingdom of God. When Jesus gets in the atmosphere, people must align and get right with Jesus. Yeah. Get right with what they're doing. Something shifted in Zacchaeus' life. He once was a tax collector tax collector robbing people in that moment he said I'm going to get back the money and I'm going to get four times back if I cheated anybody there's, a, there's an absolute demonstration of the kingdom of God I'm going to fast forward mm. okay how can we the followers of Christ bring salvation to humanity by sharing the good news, communicating to others what God has done in your life. Your testimony is the most powerful thing you have in your hands. Amen. No one can tell you you have not been changed by God. Yeah. They can argue your theology, they can debate with you, homiletics, this, this, that, apologetics. No one can argue your testimony. Come on. Share your testimony, it is powerful. Don't compare it with anyone else's, it is yours. It's powerful what God has done in your life, how he's transformed you from darkness to light. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Four, he surrendered. How did Jesus advance the kingdom of God? He surrendered. Jesus gave up his will for the fathers. On the Mount of Olives, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane with his disciples and they're praying and he's sweating bloods out. And Luke 22 says this, he withdrew among a stone's throw behind him knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. 
yet not my will, but your wills be done. Not my will, but yours will be done. Jesus advanced the kingdom by surrendering his will and going to the cross. We also can choose to surrender our will and follow the will of the Father. What is God asking you to do? Let us not waste Jesus' death by not accepting the kingdom of God. Let us surrender to our ways and embrace God's will for our lives. Sometimes it's this battle, this battle, this battle, and God is saying, just surrender. I'm waiting for you to surrender. I want you to surrender to me. It's so much better, like I said, on the other side. Amen. Let me close with this. Jesus advanced the kingdom. We said, number one, he showed up. Number two, he served. Number three, he saved. And number four, he surrendered. Guess what, church? We can do the same. Number one for us, we can show up. <laughs> number two, we can serve. Number three, we can bring salvation to the lost by sharing who God is, the great good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And number four, we can surrender our will and say, Jesus, not my will, but your will be done. And I want to ask this question to you. What do you personally have to surrender to God? What is God asking you? And if so, what is it that he is asking you to bring to him? Is it your life? It may be a thing. It may be bondage. It may be a struggle. It may be something. Whatever it is. If there is something, God is asking, is it yourself this morning? Is it yourself is he asking you to surrender yourself, your life, things? Have you experienced the great exchange surrendering your life for his? Leaving the kingdom of darkness and coming into this marvelous light is the greatest decision you will ever make in your life. And I know we got visitors and I don't know where everyone else is in their life. And it's not for me to know, it's for him to know. But I always want to give an opportunity for anyone. If this time in your life, we're going to pray and I, I just... I just want to, this is the holy moment, a holy moment um, to just ask you, is it yourself? Do you have to come into the kingdom of God? You can play. Can you come into the kingdom of God today? If that's you, just raise your hand. I would love to pray with you. If that is you, if you need to come into the kingdom of God today, if you want to embrace Jesus, say, God, I need you. Amen. If you want to rededicate your life, you know what? I know Jesus. I was taught about Jesus all my life, but I'm, I, I've been straddling. If that's you, raise your hand. I would love to pray with you. This is not to embarrass you, but just to pray with you to stand. Anyone? Amen. So we're going right into this. Let's just stand up, everybody. I want to give those an opportunity today for those right here in this house. Every one of us, if we are believers and we're walking with Jesus, strong, we're not straddling, we're saying, God, I want to advance your kingdom. Help me and give me the grace. That's the prayer I pray that whatever it is, if you're calling me to surrender something as I'm advancing this kingdom, if you're calling to open my mouth up more about salvation to people, I haven't opened up my mouth. I just kind of been quiet. I've kept the best kept secret to myself. This is your finest hour to share Jesus with people, not to keep it quiet. He's given us all a place of influence to open our mouths and to speak and to declare. If it's to surrender, if it's to save, if it's to serve. You know what? I really do like to be served. But I hear what you said, Pastor Liz, today. I need to do some more serving. I don't need to expect people to just serve me, serve me, serve me. How can I serve not just my family, my community, come on, my city. There's different places that we can serve. There's people that we love that we can serve. And so God may be asking you to serve, to dig deeper in that. Amen? And of course, I'll end with this. I'm going backwards. Show up. We need to show up as the body of Christ. We need to be the ones on the front line showing up, pushing the, the forces of darkness back. This world, as you know, when I get into it, it is upside down and crazy. But let me tell you something. If you are a believer, you have the authority of God that's within you. And guess what? The power of the Holy Spirit. And God is asking his church in this hour. He's asking because it's a question. Will you advance my kingdom? Will you advance my kingdom? I just shared with you how he did it. And there's so much more that's in this scripture about Jesus advancing the kingdom. And so today, I want to pray over you. I just want to declare that you all fear, come on, yeah. all fear, all intimidation.
trepidation, all of those things that you speak to yourself, all those things that the enemy speaks to you, all those lies would come down today that you would make a choice to advance the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus because he is the Lord of your life. So let's just lift up our hands to the Lord and receive. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you. I thank you, God, that you love us and that you're for us, God. to advance your kingdom. And I pray for the people of God, the bride of Christ today, God, that, Lord, you would give us the grace, that you would give us the fortitude, that you would give us the strength, that, Lord, we would show up, God, that we would learn how to show up and not be, Father, fickle, that we would not be here one day and not the next day. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, we need you. We need the Holy Spirit. We can't even do this without you, God. Help us to show up. Help us to serve, God. Help us, Jesus, to serve. Church said, Amen. 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 Let's clap it up for the Lord.